I remember my first day on set? Yes, I. that is one of the things that is so vivid to me, even though it was 22 years ago. Um, but I had to get myself to the village. It was a location day filming outside, freezing, cold day in the winter with Andy Devine, who's my Uncle Shadrach, who was play, playing Uncle Shadrach. And I had this scene where I have to get the wallet back from him that we both mutually stolen from Pollard and um, he sees that I've stolen it, he takes it and now it's my chance to get it back and we're in we're in this outside barn, I've got a pleather skirt on that is so high up, it's just <laughs> so awkward and I have to get really close up to my Uncle Shadrach who obviously Andy made me feel so at ease but I was so nervous and having to do something so intimate with with someone who was a bit older than me and it was my first day I don't think I could um, quickly forget something as as intense as that but it, it was fun and yeah it was my first ever day my contract originally was a, a few episodes here and there. I think it was over three months. And I remember my agent telling me, because I was still at uni doing my degree. So when I got this, that phone call, I was, I couldn't get my head around it. I was thinking, I'm still at uni. I've got a job on a soap, playing a big character, playing Charity Dingle. It was one of the best things I will ever remember about, about finding out I'd got the job. Yeah. The job has undoubtedly changed my life because it's given me a wonderful security and being part of a family such as the Dingles, it's, you know, whether I'd have left years ago or, or you know, sustained my time here, I just think I'll forever be a Dingle. And, you know, it, when people come up to you and tell you how uh, brilliant they think the Dingles are, you just feel a bit proud. And, you know, all the people I've got to work with over the time I've been here, um, yeah, it's just an honour really. I do have a standout storyline which I absolutely loved and I think it's when, it's back, way back with Chris Tate World where Charity, it's revealed to the audience that Charity has this secret daughter and she never told Kane about it and it's just the eruption um, that she's trying to keep secret and Debbie literally turns up and says, I'm your daughter and, and Charity being Charity fully denies it. and. You know, doesn't recognise Debbie because she's never seen her, and is just gobsmacked when all the pictures come out and she has to face the the you know face the truth, uh, all the secrets and lies, and and having that time working with Charlie and Jeff was really special, and even just the chemistry between us all, we were like a we were close outside of work as well, and that really helps. I suppose I could never forget that the storyline where Chris Tate frames Charity for his murder. Um, obviously he has this inoperable brain tumour and having discovered that Charity's not only been having an affair with, with his sister, she's been intimate with Kane as well because they've got so much history and, and I just think, you know, he decides that enough is enough and he's no way out being ill so he decides what a great idea it would be to frame Charity. So yeah, and I've got one strange, vivid image of me dressed in like some strange boiler suit where I got stripped in the police station of all my possessions, all my clothes, because obviously they have to do the fingerprint and the DNA and everything. And, and um, I remember being in this boiler suit thinking, oh, this is real, This I'm, I'm in Emmerdale being framed for murder, what, you know. I can definitely pinpoint the most shocking thing Charity's ever done, although, I mean, there are hundreds of things, you know, where I simply can't def really defend her for her actions. But one in particular was where she decided, she made a pact with Zoe Tate that she would technically sell her child to buy her freedom from prison, which is just unbelievable, you know, and obviously it is a soap, so there's artistic license, but it was very serious at the time and um, she kept it secret from Debbie until the very last minute where Debbie finds out and just dis dismisses her and you know it's an unforgivable act I mean who sells their own child but she yeah she's that desperate and selfish to buy her freedom that she does indeed you know I mean it all falls through in the end but the fact that she was even willing to do it in the first place is kind of outrageous <laughs> yeah I love the fact that people always mention the history and the, the sort of legendary chemistry that went with Kane and Charity. And Jeff is probably the closest thing I could call a brother. Um, so 
for us to have that those amazing storylines the scams we used to do and just spending that much time with someone as brilliant as Jeff and having when you know someone that well you can really enjoy the scenes because you can you can work on them and, and say let's you know and we wanted so much the more feedback we got that it was working the more we wanted to do even better and, and produce even more amazing stuff between one another and yeah I, I do look back fondly with that and I hope one day that it will re-emerge you know and maybe it will but yeah some of my favorite memories are the scams dressing up you know putting wigs on and going to, to rob cars with Jeff it was sometimes very silly and, and and you know ridiculous but it was it was so much fun charity has had so many weddings i mean like she's the liz taylor of soap is she <laughs> but most of them are some of them she doesn't go through with um particular in, in particular that i really loved the wedding with kane actually because it doesn't happen and she says why do we need to do this and it, i remember it was snowing i had this ridiculous pink dress on i think very short again might not have been pink but it's funny what you do remember and though it was really emotional and then they have this split second where they, she doesn't want to go through with it because she thinks why do we actually need this it, it will change everything it will change the dynamics it, will, it may ruin the chemistry we why do we need to get married so I, I remember that being really special i think the wedding to chris tate was utterly memorable due to the the fashion that went with the wedding. Um, they chose the design. The costume designers chose this most incredible Moulin Rouge style regalia. It was off the scale. I don't. I think I struggled to get in the building at one point because there was so much going on, so many plumes of. I, I just remember it being huge, and I was constantly going, "Oh, excuse me, just, just a huge dress here." I mean, it was off the scale, but it was so much fun to dress up. And then, and then I remember Cherie Murphy spinning around in a teacup. That's all I can remember. An image of of Cherie laughing with, with her head back in this giant teacup that was a huge fairground that was in the grounds of Home Farm. And I just remember thinking, "Have I gone mad?" It was funny. I suppose being in a soap for 22 years, you get to work with some incredible people, some incredible talent. And of course, I think one of my favorite human beings that I ever worked with on this show has to be Leah Bracknell. And I miss her so much. And yeah, we had some incredibly funny, intense stuff together. Um, and yeah, I, I miss her a lot and just, yeah, just that sort of secret affair we had behind Chris's back. We were both really nervous about that to begin with. And the more we talked about it and the more we went through lines, the more I realised actually this is a walk in the park because I'm with someone who is so incredibly understanding, She's such a team player and such an all round decent human. So when you're faced with that, you have nothing to worry about. So she took all the worry away and I thought that was a really good chemistry. And yeah, I miss her a lot. There's so many memorable scenes. It's really difficult, but I think I really enjoyed it when when I worked with Patsy Kensett, Sadie, because it was it was it was handbags at dawn, and I know I know that phrase is probably so overly used with things like soap, but there's a moment where Sadie pushes Charity down the stairs, and she ends up in this neck brace for about a few blocks, and it it ended up being quite funny because we'd be having moments of serious, you know, head to head, tete a tete. And I'd be like in this neck brace and I couldn't really turn. And we just used to corpse all the time because I'd be like, what did you say? It, it was just, it was fun. We, we had all these wool pack um, showdowns with this neck brace. And I, I do remember that being um, a, a, good, a good memory. I think being a dingle, it feels pretty special to be fair just because you know you're going to get those memorable moments in time celebrating christmas all in the dingles homestead i you can't get a better bunch of people together than james hooten and jeff hordley and you know um jane cox back in the day with steve halliwell um and bell eden and i think when you're all together and you're celebrating something and you've got amazing one-off, you know, one-liners where you're just, somebody's cracking a joke or saying something really inappropriate. 
and so you feel you genuinely feel like you're in this incredible family and it's everyone always just know you know they always can pick out a family it's like you know you always go the dingles they're brilliant the, there's one storyline that i wish i'd have been involved in and i feel a bit bereft that i wasn't because it was so good and it was it was it was all the lead up to emma barton's demise and it it, it culminated in this the car crash where she's on top of the bridge in her white wedding gown stained with blood she's locked john barton in the house she's beheaded a chicken there's just something about the way Gillian played it. She nailed it. And I remember texting her going, oh my God, you're so good. You're so good. I'm screaming. I, I was screaming at the TV when, you know, when you're on the edge of your seat, genuinely. And I'm like, I'm in this show and I'm watching something that I'm loving so much. I felt so bloody proud to be part of it, even though I wasn't in it. I was fuming. I do love Amadale for the people. I, I can't, I always end up saying that, but it's so true. And what I love are some of my most amazing friends are not just cast, they're, they're production crew and we all were able to have such fun on set because you have to, when you're doing long days, you have to be able to, you know, have fun as well and so yeah, I have to say the people without doubt. Yeah.